Hello again from the Raleigh Coin Club. Our topic this time is fractional currency, or what some might call paper coins. Fractional currency is paper money issued in fractional amounts of $1, such as the 5 and 10 cent notes shown. As we will learn, the United States issued fractional currency in amounts of 3, 5, 10, 15, 25, and 50 cents beginning during the Civil War. Money supply was greatly affected by the Civil War. After the start of the war, the metal value in coins increased to be more than the face value. The coins were hoarded and eventually disappeared from circulation. People were not sure which way the war would go, and at that time paper money was not popular. Specie payment was suspended by New York City banks in December of 1861, meaning paper money could no longer be exchanged for gold or silver. Even copper coins became scarce. Day-to-day -day commerce became impossible because change could not be made. Companies tried printing private scrip, but the problem with scrip was that the notes were only redeemable from the store where they were issued. The use of postage stamps was in vogue for a while, but they wore out quickly, stuck together, and caused postal issues because stamps became in short supply. But the two stamps shown would be key in the future of fractional currency. Several companies developed encased stamps, like the one shown in the middle, which protected the stamps and provided some advertising. But the containers were expensive, there were too few of them, and the mica front cracked easily. Many tokens, the same size as the relatively new small cent, were made for use. These are called Civil War tokens. There were many designs, a few of which are pictured on the right. These were widely accepted until they were outlawed by Congress. Civil War tokens were mostly used as cent replacements, and were inconvenient for larger amounts. There is some debate about who developed the idea of fractional currency. Was it William Newton, or General Francis Elias Spinner, the then U.S. Treasurer? Both pasted stamps onto small pieces of paper, but Spinner is usually given the credit. And so, fractional currency was born. There are five different issues of fractional currency, and each issue has similar values for the notes. But the designs for each issue are completely different. The design changes were mostly done to prevent counterfeiting. Fractional notes were at first viewed as temporary emergency money, but as people got used to using them, the notes became popular, and hung on until 1876. In 1953, Robert Friedberg developed a system to identify all the issues and varieties of U.S. currency, including fractional. The numbers on the right-hand side shown as F, with various numbers are the standard now to identify currency. Since there are so many varieties of fractional notes, it would be good to learn more about this system, before collecting the notes. This is because the numbers are not fully consecutive within each issue, and there is some overlap from issue to issue. See the Guidebook of U.S. Paper Money, for more information. The first issue is properly called postage currency. The Postage Currency Act of July 17, 1862, only applied to stamps. Therefore, the notes issued as paper money were without legal standing. But printing notes with pictures of current stamps was accepted. A law passed on March 3, 1863, authorized fractional currency, and because it mentioned postage currency, they became legal. All notes had reprints of the postage stamps we saw earlier. Some varieties had perforated edges, just like stamps, as shown in the blow-up of the corner of the 10-cent note. Since these notes were not printed by the government, and because the government was concerned that one company would have both printing plates, the face of the notes were printed by the National Bank Note Company, and the backs printed by the American Bank Note Company. All notes in the second issue had identical vignettes, and the same portrait of George Washington for the face, but each had different denominations. The second issue notes, and the remaining issues, are properly called fractional currency. The bronze oval was applied first, as can be seen on the reduced size inset photo of an experimental note. The oval was used to prevent counterfeiters from photographing the notes to make plates, as that area would turn out black. The backs of the notes had different colors, the only U.S. currency to do so, to help tell them apart. Brown on the 5 cent, green on the 10, purple on the 25, and red on the 50 cent note. Unlike the first issue, these notes were produced by the National Currency Bureau in the U.S. Treasury Building, under the supervision of Spencer Clark, 
who we will learn about later. The National Currency Bureau eventually became the Bureau of Engraving and Printing we have today. This was the first time the U.S. had done printing in-house, and doing so reduced costs by about 75%. For the third issue, and remaining issues, various portraits were used, along with allegorical figures. Notes 10 cents and higher are signed, some by hand. The third issue has the largest number of design variations and number of denominations. Each denomination is a different size. All the notes were made by the treasury. Most notes have green backs, but there is some notes with red backs, except for the three-cent notes. The three-cent note was added, to correspond with the cost of a stamp. It was only made for a short time, from January to April of 1865, because of the introduction in 1865 of the three-cent nickel coin. In the law authorizing the coin, three-cent notes were no longer authorized, and were to be redeemed. Spencer Clark, superintendent of the National Currency Bureau, put his bust on the five-cent note. People initially assumed it was going to be the bust of the explorer William Clark, of Lewis and Clark fame. Congress was not too pleased with Spencer. Spencer's audacity resulted in a new law, that no living person can appear on U.S. coins, currency, or bonds. Two other people were depicted on fractional currency, during their lifetime. The first was Francis E. Spinner, Treasurer of the United States, who died in 1890, and William P. Fessenden, who was a U.S. Senator, and former Secretary of the Treasury. Their notes were put in circulation before the law was passed. The third note is an allegorical figure representing justice. As previously mentioned, Spinner is credited with developing the fractional currency idea. He liked to experiment with making notes harder to counterfeit. Fractional notes were the first to use fiber paper, color-tinted paper, silk fibers, watermarked paper, and overprints, to deter counterfeiters. Spinner was also the first government official to hire women. Initially, that was because they could not be drafted, but he continued after the war's end. This is a good time to discuss varieties. As you can see, they really proliferate in the third issue. Varieties are due to many reasons. Some are whether the note has perforated edges or not, red or green backs, block plate number or not, surcharge mark or not, and so on. Some of the third issue notes were hand signed by Spinner, such as the justice note shown. Here is another story, impacted by Clark putting his image on a note. On the day the law was passed, that prevented putting living people on notes, the plates for the 15-cent note, depicting Generals Sherman and Grant, had not been completed. Thus, the notes fell under the scope of the new law, as both were still alive. The Sherman and Grant notes were not issued, and exist only as specimens. Specimens exist for many of the earlier fractional currency notes too, as they were popular with stamp collectors. There are fewer specimens for the fourth and fifth issues. A specimen means only one side of the note, either front or back, has been printed, on a piece of paper. The paper can be the same size as the note would have been, or larger paper such as those shown. Some specimens from the second and third issues, are printed on Confederate States of America watermarked paper, that shows the letter CSA. The paper was captured from the blockade runner Bermuda. According to Robert Kravitz in his book on fractional currency, only 9,016 of the 11 types of Sherman Grant specimen notes were printed, and as of 1884, only 3,513 pairs were outstanding. Considering that since then, some of these were probably accidentally destroyed, or thrown out, these specimens are the rarest of the entire fractional currency series. The 10-cent note has a representation of liberty, and the 15-cent, a representation of Columbia. The Columbia note is the only 15-cent denomination, in coins or currency, in U.S. history. George Washington makes his last of nine appearances, on the 25-cent note. The fourth issue is the first time the Treasury seal was used. All notes have printed signatures. There are no red backs, and most printing was done by the bank note companies. There were three different 50-cent notes in the fourth issue, each with only one variety. The top note pictures Abraham Lincoln. The Lincoln note is popular with collectors, in several collectible areas, and with popularity, comes increased cost. 
the middle note pictures Edward Stanton, Lincoln's Secretary of War. The bottom note pictures Samuel Dexter, Secretary of War, and of the Treasury, from 1800 to 1801. Each note is a different size, with the Dexter note being the tallest of any of the notes, from any issue. There are only three notes in the fifth and final issue. Each note is a different size. The fifth issue may have not been needed, as coins were finally beginning to return to circulation. But the notes had grown in popularity, so there was no hurry to remove them from circulation. The notes had filled a need during a crisis. By acts in January, 1874, and April, 1876, the notes were to be retired, as rapidly as practical, and redeemed for silver coin. Redemption was slow, due to their popularity. There were slightly over 1.8 million pieces of fractional currency issued, with a face value of almost $369 million. Over 1.3 million pieces were redeemed. By 1876, about 455,000 had not been redeemed, and are still on the Treasury's books as legal tender. All face designs were made by the Treasury. All back designs were made by bank note companies. The 10 and 25 cent were done by the Columbian Bank Note Company. The 50 cent by the Joseph R. Carpenter Company. William Crawford is featured on the 50 cent note. Crawford was a War and Treasury Secretary from 1815 to 1825. His face may look familiar. This note is affectionately called, the Bob Hope Note, as many people think the portrait of Crawford looks like the famous entertainer and comedian, Bob Hope. Hope is pictured on the left. Interested in collecting fractional currency notes? Here are various ways to do that, and tips of what to look for. First, you could collect from one, or all five of the issues. There are 23 major types through the five issues. But that quickly expands, to over 140 notes, if you want every variety. There are nine notes with George Washington's likeness. Like most collectibles, there are a few notes that are hard to find, in any condition, but most notes can be had for reasonable amounts, in nice condition. To pick the better ones, look for the six items, listed in the last bullet. That's our quick overview of fractional currency. Until next time, happy collecting.